Hi, today we're going to look at using the STN WebCart CSV import export functions to upload prices and inventory from a sample point of sale report. Let's go ahead and take a look at our demo website. We're looking here at some of the products within the bathtub toys category we created. We can see we've got all kinds of items here, different price ranges. Um, we check the stock, we'd see the chalk stock numbers on those too. And so what we're going to do is um, generating a sample point of sale report. Here I've got a, um, I've opened up a, a file that I put together. It could be from any typical um, retail point of sale system. First of all, we open that up and we've got essentially some garbly gook look in here. It's hard to read. So one of the first things I want to do is just select it within Excel and I'll double click the right hand column to give myself a nice visible display of everything I've actually got in this report. So I'm looking at that real quick. I see, great, I've got my item numbers. I've got uh, my descriptions, my names, okay, quantity on hand, perfect, and retail price, perfect. That's what I want to upload. But there's a few things to fix up first to make this easy on myself. And once you learn the tricks of this, it's going to be really easy to make this a quick little process. First thing to notice is that in this demo sample, all my names, for some reason, my point of sale system only uses like 20 characters or something, then I get this weird um, extension. I don't want to upload those and mess up my, all my website names. So I'm going to get rid of that column. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to delete that whole column. I don't need to update my names anyway. I just want to do the item number, the quantity on hand, and the retail. Now the other thing about this is that I've already got headers in here from my retail point of sale system, but if I go back to the website and I've used the CSV import functions, let's just go there, assume we've logged in, we're going to go to the shopping cart, and the CSV import export. Before I do that, it's always a great idea to go to the backup and do a backup. We're going to create a new backup date. Okay, now going on to CSV import, so we've got a backup of the file there on the server. Um, what I want to do now is check this out. I've got a default configuration that says SKU name in stock and price. I don't have to use that though. In my opinion, the easiest thing to do is actually to set headers and to use the default options of use column headers as configuration. When that's set, it doesn't matter what your configuration is here. If you have properly named column headers, those will get sorted and used in the correct order. So let's see how to do that. I'm going to go ahead and hide this option here. Okay, the available fields here on this right tab tell you the exact name in red of the text category header that you'll need. So if we were to also look on the configuration tab, we can see it here as well, product underscore name, product underscore in stock, and product underscore price. So we need underscore SKU, in stock, and price. Now let's go back to our Excel report. I am going to clean that up. SKU. Okay. In fact, I've got a sample here that I've copied over, so I've got SKU in stock and price. Those are the three headers that I need. Perfect. Now I just need to save this. So we'll save as and I'm just going to call this a upload report 001. It's important to save it as a correct type of CSV in Windows here on um, Excel, I'm actually going to select the type here, and the type I want to do is the first CSV, the CSV comma delimited file format here. You see there's other CSVs, there's Macintosh, MS-DOS, we don't want to use those, definitely just want to use the CSV comma delimited, the top one, okay? And then we'll save that. We get an alert from Excel saying you can't save multiple sheets. For our purposes, that's fine. We don't really care. And it says it may not be compatible. That's okay too. Okay, so we've saved our file there. I'm going to jump back to the website and we're ready to import our prices. Before we do that, I'm going to just show you here. We've got a fun sale going on at the store. Everything on our store is 93 cents, ending in 93 cents. Hmm. I've also set up some Excel or some um, items here 
that don't have a matching SKU in the website to illustrate a couple things here. So these items I've highlighted in red are purposely not going to match up, and I'll show you why we're going to do that next. Okay, so let's go back to importing. We've got our Excel file ready, and we've got our common delimiters of comma in quotation for uh, Excel CSVs, and we're ready to import. We don't uh, importing. We don't need to really play with this right hand side here. So what we're going to do is use the default settings. We want to update existing products. Perfect. If we had regular upload on, any new SKUs would create new products. So we definitely don't want to do that. We just want to update anything that's a matching SKU. So leave it there. And we'll just leave all our options the same. Again, this use column headers is the key here to defining what columns we're going to use. Okay. So I'm going to browse for my file. And let's see, I've got on my document, where did I go here? Let's just go to CSV import, upload report 01. We're going to select that, double click it. Now it's loaded here on my file path, and I'm ready to submit. It's kind of an odd little button, but this text right here, submit CSV is what we need to click. The system will upload the file and then present me with a preview of the data that I'm uploading. In this case, I've got my product SKU in stock and price, and I see the first five items that are going to get imported. It makes, gives me an extra chance to make sure everything's in the right order. Looks good, so I'll continue the upload. Give it a second here. All right, now I get a report on what got updated. I updated the price of 746 of the items, 33 got skipped, and out of a total of 779. So let's just kind of scroll down. I can see, oh, everything got looks up pretty good. Now what were those that were skipped? We know what they are, but let's just take a look. Ah, here's all my SKUs that had the BBB in them. Interesting, and I have another one here. We'll have to take a look at that in the next session. There's a trick that we're going to look at called the problem with leading zeros. So look for that in a different training session. But those SKUs that we have identified as BBB in our POS report, we purposely skipped over those because we don't want to upload the incorrect data. If we go to the front end of our site now, and we'll refresh. Everything now is our 29.93 price, 93 cents. There we go. Quick, quick way to import thousands of products, price and quantity on hand within just a couple minutes. If you set up your CSV report, a CSV file, excuse me, with these three column headers, you can just copy and paste that as you go forward. So let's say we have this in a, you know, a template Excel file. We just open it up and we say, select those three, copy them. And we open up our Excel report every week or every day, and then we just paste those three in there. And automatically I've got the right column headers for my data. Works really good. The other thing we could do, let's just jump on this real quick at the close out this session, is if you are able to um, generate a report that's definable from your point of sale system, you can set a configuration. Let's just do that real quick. So we're going to do a sample configuration here. And I'm going to change these. So I'm going to say in my defined configuration, I'm always going to upload SKU, then in stock, and then price. Okay. If I do that, and then during import, I say, don't use column headers. Basically, what I'm telling the system is to use my defined or my custom ordering over here. Okay, So that's what we're going to do in this example here. We'll browse to the file. In this case, I'm just going to use that same file as a quick example. And we'll upload. You'll get a notice, see here it says, OK, I'm defining the SKU in stock and price. It's also putting that first row in there, so we don't want to do that. In this case, since we have text up there, we'd say skip that first row, actually. Okay, 
Let's browse there again. And submit. That's what we want. We got our headers aligned correctly because the columns are in that order. And so we would go ahead and continue to upload. There you go. That concludes our uploading prices and stock quantity, a great way to keep your website inventory and pricing matching your point of sale system. Thanks again.